Hello everyone. So for today, I'd like to talk a little bit about lines, be it lines for construction or clean line drawing or whatever. Because if you haven't noticed, your lines are the foundation of what you paint on, as well as the sketch is the foundation on what you do your good line drawing on. So all in all, your lines and your line quality is pretty important. Of course, in the sketching phase and the ideation process, where you just scribble about, the quality of your lines may lack something. They might not be as smooth or as straight as you want them to be, or not as visually graded as you'd like them to be. Which is perfectly fine, as long as you can understand your sketch yourself. And the importance of the little minuscule details in your lines will gradually rise up until you have your finished clean line drawing. And you may ask, why am I telling you this? Obviously, it's because I'm about to give you some really handy tips that for the most part don't really require much skill or work for you to be using right now. That's right, most of the line drawing hacks are completely theoretical and just something that you gotta know and apply. Now the first thing I want to tackle is about the sketching phase and your lines there. When you sketch, I know a lot of people that will just scribble about. They will put the pen to the paper or the stylus to their tablet and start scribbling everywhere until they get something that looks good. And this might be fine at the beginning, but the better you get at art, the longer it's going to take for you to just be scribbling until you get something that you consider to be good. A lot of people have adapted to this kind of drawing method because of all the speed paints that are out there. As you can see in the background, there's also a sped up painting. The one from last week where I had around, I don't know, three hours for the full line art, which means compressed into this short time where this video is happening, these two and a half to three hours of work get compressed down to about 10 minutes or so. And obviously my sketching face is going to look like I was scribbling about all the time, making strokes here and there and erasing a lot of stuff. And that's about it. So a lot of people make the conclusion that Sketching is something that is done really quickly, you know, because it's called a sketch, a quick sketch, which of course, if you have an industry professional, you have someone that will sketch something in a very short amount of time, you know, something like 20 to 30 minutes that will look good. But since most of us just did not have 10 years of professional experience in drawing, we tend to not being able to replicate that kind of drawing in such time, which is why when most of us just scribble about, almost nothing looks really good. We get some happy accidents here and there. But look at the background drawing time lapse for a second. I'm pretty sure at this point in time, I'm not even done with the final sketch, not the line drawing, just the sketch underneath that's going to be completely wiped when the painting is done. And as I do this sketch, I always look up to the reference and see what's going on. What do I have to draw? I'm not looking at the reference and then sketching for 10 minutes. I carefully observe the thing that I want to draw and then I draw it for 10 to 20 seconds before looking at the reference again. Even if in the time lapse, it just looks like I'm drawing constantly at super speed. So my tip for the sketching phase is that you carefully observe what you want to draw for a few seconds and then take 10 to 20 seconds to look at your canvas and draw it before checking the reference again to see if you made any mistakes. Now let's go over from the sketching phase to the actual line art phase. Here is where the actual bunch of tips are going to happen. Because let's face it, the sketch is something almost nobody is going to see. But the line art in very many art styles is still shown in the final piece. So that's where the money is sitting. And the first thing I'd like you to know is to know where your focal point will be. Because when you do a line drawing, focusing smaller details with many, many small lines clunked up together will draw attention. The viewer's eye will automatically go for a very detailed area, for instance, the face. You should know when to use thinner lines and thicker lines, because having a detailed area with 
relatively large and thick lines tends to look a little odd, which is mostly because thick lines also attract the viewer's attention. It's a little hard to understand like that if I say thin lines attract the viewer's attention because of detail and thick lines attract also the viewer's attention. But you need to see it this way. If you have a focal point with much detail, then you use smaller lines because you don't want to have the vocal point be such a attractor to the viewer's eye that it's not gonna notice anything else in the line drawing. And on the opposite, if you have something where you need a really thick line, to which I will come later, you should only put detail very scarcely, since you don't want to be having the viewer not look at your vocal points. But that's enough vocal points for now. Let's tackle something called line tapering, which is something that I'm almost sure everybody of you has already done once if they drew digital and probably if they drew traditionally. Tapering lines is basically just having a line being of a certain thickness thin out at the beginning or the end, which almost always occurs naturally, be it digital or traditional. But in digital, this is only natural if you have a tablet that has pen pressure, together with a brush that supports that. However, in Photoshop, for instance, basically every brush supports pen pressure. This little taper at the end and the beginning can give your line drawing a real character. With the little taper at the end, you can, for instance, imply that there is an edge bleeding out. A very common instance for that taper is when you see a manga or an anime drawing of a woman with cleavage, you will most likely see some kind of tapering on their chest. That implies that there is a big edge you know, from the chest that bleeds out into a thinner and thinner edge and then completely disappears. This is obviously a very good technique for drawing anatomy or other organic shapes, because when drawing something with hard surfaces, you just don't really have these tapering little shapes that bleed out into nothingness. Now, another tip that I have for you is managing your line thickness. And that means carefully knowing when to use small lines and when to use thick lines. Something like I told you before with the detail that should have small lines and no detail should have more thicker lines, just for even more specific things like the silhouette or outline of a character or whatever you're drawing, even a prop, should always be some kind of thick line. It doesn't need to be the thickest line that you have in your drawing, but it should be very visible so you have a good read on the silhouette. Just like the general rule that whatever is in the foreground or is overlapping something that is in the background should have a thicker line on the outline at least than whatever it is overlapping. If you have some very, very far away background elements, you can even play with not connecting all the lines to imply some atmospheric perspective in line art. The thing with the thick lines in the foreground and smaller lines in the background also gives your painting or drawing a little bit more visual hierarchy and generally makes it read better for people that haven't seen it at all. Now, of course, all these rules and tips and tricks that I gave you here don't come without exception. There are certain styles of sketching or certain styles of line art that only depend on one line thickness and what not all. These are all just general rules and tips and tricks that can push your line art in a theoretical way, in something that you don't have to train your hand-eye coordination to do for years and years. These are all tips that you can apply right now and that can really boost your line drawing skills. Now, if you know any tips or tricks or whatever about line drawing that I haven't mentioned in this video, then let me know. And if a bunch of them come together, maybe there will be a part two, something like line art tips that you cannot use right now. But with any further ado, happy drawing everybody and until next time.